Hello. Good evening, everybody. My name is Hannah Quick. I'm going to try to not screech your ears out here. Um, I am the Events and Marketing Director at the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce. I am also a participant in the Community Leadership Program this year. And it is my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for this evening, Jared Abaderis. So Jared is sitting right over there. <laughs> Put him on the hot seat here a little bit. Um, he is a graduate of Watoma High School. He joined the Badgers as a walk-on during his freshman year of college. While taking classes and playing football, he married his lovely wife, Rachel. I also heard that they have a son on the way, in addition to the three children they already have. After a successful career with the Badgers, which I'm sure he will touch on, Jared was drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the fifth round of the 2014 NFL Draft. He was also a member of the Detroit Lions, playing wide receiver. Did someone just clap for the Detroit Lions? <laughs> go Pack, go! You know where you are, right? <laughs> he became the first Badgers player drafted by the Packers since 2001. At the time, head coach Mike McCarthy said, it's nice to come up here and say, about time we finally drafted one. Jared overcame a great deal of adversity, encountering various injuries during his athletic career. We're thrilled to have him back in the area and learn about what he's up to now as a financial advisor with Thrivent. Here to tell his story, please welcome Jared Abaderis. for having me. I didn't get the dress code memo, so you all look a lot better than me, but that's all right. Um, so yeah, just today I just want to be able to share a little bit of my story, um, kind of tie it into um, somewhat of business as well. Um, that's kind of what I've done in my career, um, so hopefully that can tie in for some of you guys as well, and then also the um, high schoolers that are here um, too. Hopefully there's something that you can take out of it too and apply in your life. So I'm just going to kind of go through my story. Might be a little bit quick. I mean, it could last for you know an hour, but I'll try to keep it quicker than maybe 10, 15 minutes, um, and open up to some questions. If people have any questions, you can ask really about anything from A to Z. Um, I've spoken in front of you know elementary kids, and I get some goofy questions there all the way up. So don't feel like um, you can't ask a question. But if there's anything at the end, just know you can ask a question if you're thinking about a few things um, through the story. So. Um, I grew up in a really small town. I'm a lot smaller, smaller than this, even though it's pretty close. Um, Watoma is where I grew up. And um, the first, um, actually there's three things I kind of want to point out in my story. Um, the first one is going to be community. Second one is going to be the overcoming, the, uh, overcoming obstacles. And then the third one um, will be goal setting. So remind me if I forget one of them, but I'll kind of tie it into the story. Uh, but yeah, I grew up in a really small town. Um, and as I'm married, I have three kids, one on the way. You know, I start thinking about you know, why was my um, you know, life or younger years in a small town so successful and enjoyable for me because um, I want to be able to replicate that for my kids. And everything really came down to the community. It really came down to the people that you're around, um, really the parents that are building into that community, really getting a good network of parents that are you know, trying to make their community better. And obviously that's what you guys do um, with the chamber. Um, and so that's really important if you don't have that, if you don't have people in your community trying to be leaders and step up and you know, make sure that you're helping that grow and building that community and helping people have um, a better life, you're not going to have, um, your kids won't have success. Um, and that's not going to be a successful place. So that's kind of what I you know, really thought about is how did I do that? It really came down to my parents, um, but then also the leadership that I had and really in you know, the group of kids that we had. So grew up in um, a small town. Really started out with you know four, really four or five guys in, in our core group um, that really kept each other out of trouble, um, set goals, kept each other pushing each other, whether that was in sports or in academics or really every aspect of life. Um, and really all throughout, you know, elementary, middle school, um, high school. I mean, we we really did push each other. Um, we brought other people along. I mean, it started out with four or five kids. By the time I got to high school, we probably had thirty or forty guys in our group that you know, just wanted to be great. Um, and I look at those guys right now, and, and really the majority of them have been really successful um, at a pretty young age. Um, and so that's, that's pretty cool uh, testament and really how I got to where I was is really those guys around me that um, you know, kept me accountable and was able to push myself because they pushed me as well. 
Um, goals, like I said, we set some goals to really, we wanted to um, win state in football. Watoma really sucked at football, to be honest. Um, I, I honestly don't think they won a, a playoff game um, until my sophomore year. We won our first playoff game. So, um, got through, you know, sophomore year, junior, senior year. Senior year, we ended up winning state in football. We won state in track. Um, so, we really took the program from nothing to something. And that really came from that accountability and that community. Um, Overcoming obstacles, I guess my, you know, I had a pretty easy life. Didn't really have many, you know, struggles. I mean, blessed to grow up in a really great family, um, you know, family that supported me, encouraged me. Um, you know, for me, you know, sports was really everything. Um, you know, I was kind of like number one. I mean, obviously, education was important. Um, I knew that, but sports was really my number one that I loved to do. Um, but came sophomore year, I was actually the starter. Um, on our varsity football team, I was a starting quarterback and starting safety. Um, but that year, I was like the ninth game of the season, I ended up breaking my femur. Mm -hmm. So the big one right here, I broke my femur and tore my ACL in the, it was like the ninth game. And that was really the first, you know, real adversity that I went through um, because something that, you know, was so important to me was taken away. Um, I remember listening to the doctors, you know, after the game, or right after the injury, they were, you know, feeling my knee and it was all over the place and they are like, you know, you might not play football again. Um, and then, you know, just hearing that really, you know, took me back. Um, but six months from the date of that injury, I placed fourth and fifth in state um, for hurdles at the state track meet. So it was just crazy, you know, it was really a miracle. Um, faith is huge for me, um, but it was really a miracle how quick I came back. Um, but that was just overcoming that adversity. And I learned a few things from that injury. It was, you know, really God has, you know, things that happen in your life, everything happens for a reason, understanding that no matter, you know, you're not going to be able to you know, map out your life, even though you're going to try to set different goals and achieve them. Um, things are going to happen, um, but as long as you're doing your best and, and trying to do your part, um, everything's going to you know, fall into place. Um, and so I think for me, you know, falling into place was just before I got to the level of fame that I had in my career. Um, I think God wanted to know that it wasn't me, it was him. Um, and so I learned that, you know, through the injury that you know, before all the fame and the all state and the all Big Ten and getting drafted by the Packers and whatnot. It wasn't really me, but it was him that was doing it. Um, but then also understanding that, hey, everything happens for a reason. So down the road when I got cut from the Packers my second year and then, you know, came back in the practice squad and made the team a couple of weeks later, you know, not getting too down on myself because I understood that, you know, hey, there's a bigger picture and I've just got to get through these, you know, tough times to get to that point. So, you know, for people in business, obviously, um, there's going to be good times, bad times, um, but getting through that, just understanding that, hey, as long as you're doing your best and, and putting in your work, you know, whether that means it's going to be a different direction or a new path or, you know, hey, it's just going to be a, a speed bump in the road in that, you know, in your business, if you just keep pushing or, or find that next thing, um, it's going to be better at the end of the day. So um, that was pretty cool for me to learn early on, even though it wasn't a fun experience going through all the PT and whatnot. Um, I remember I was in crutch, or I was on a wheelchair for a month, I was in crutches for another month after that, and then, so yeah, four months after that, I was faster than I was the year before, so it was pretty crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, then, so senior year, senior year, I had really good success, like I said, we won um, one state football, one state track, um, I was actually probably a better track athlete, I set both state records um, for the hurdles um, for Division Two um, my senior year, um, so I had really good success there, I was actually going to go to Madison for track, and then I just contacted Coach Bielema, he was the coach at the time, um, I asked him if I could walk on for football, because I just loved like the team aspect of football. And so he allowed it, um, thankfully, and um, I just kind of switched to football and stuff with that, I didn't want to be somebody in both sports, I wanted to put my all at that point um, into something that I could be, you know, really somebody, so um, it ended up working out, um, like I said, I walked on, um, I think my second year, Freshman year, didn't play um, red shirt. Freshman year, um, had, I think, like three touchdowns, 20-some catches, and like 200-some yards. So as a walk-on, as a freshman, um, pretty cool to be able to have that um, you know, level of play. And then my red shirt sophomore year, that was the year that we had Russell Wilson. So I was actually our leading receiver alongside Nick Toom. Um, I just made him were like number one and two. Um, but I led the team that year in interceptions and yards and, and touchdowns. Um, and I was still a walk-on at that point, so that was pretty frustrating, but I earned my, earned my scholarship after that, um, which was a blessing. Um, earned all Big Ten type accolades um, my junior, senior year. Had a lot of success, had some good moments, had some bad moments, um, but that was a really good, you know, I guess, 
time in my life, um, you know, being around people you love, and in college you got a bunch of your buddies and whatnot you're playing alongside. Um, and so it was just an awesome experience being down at UW Madison, um, and then I was able to obviously get my education as well, which was important. Um, and then yeah, just meet a lot of great people. Um, but then yeah, so like I said, as a little kid, dreamed of you know really playing for the Packers. Um, I think like every not every I wouldn't say, but majority of People that like football in Wisconsin are going to dream of playing for the Packers. And so um, pretty crazy when I got to that point in my career um, where I had the opportunity to get drafted or at least put my name out there. Um, and then got drafted in the end of the fifth round by the Packers, which was awesome. Uh, first year was tough, another adversity. Um, had a, I tore my ACL on that same um, leg that was bad early on in training camp. You know, really tough for me just because I think I was so excited to get to that opportunity. I, I was making you know somewhat of um, momentum and waves in, in training camp and whatnot and getting opportunities to play alongside Aaron um, with him and his trust early on and then to have that kind of severed right away just with the injury was pretty pretty difficult. Um, but like I said, I think I learned a lot you know through that first injury that I had and a couple of the other obstacles that I had throughout my life um, just to kind of you know stay strong and keep keep pushing um, and try to find the good in everything. And so that year was a tough year, but I was able to you know, really dive into the playbook, um, you know, really learn the ins and outs of the game. And I think that you know, helped me um, you know, at least in the next two, three years of playing in the NFL. So um, that next year, I was able to play. I never really became, you know, I think that's kind of the one tough thing about getting drafted to the Packers, you know, being a Badger. I think if you understand the NFL and how business works, if you're a business owner and you're paying some guy ten million a year, that guy better perform, you know, rather than the guy that's pay, you're paying four hundred thousand to, or whatever the case may be. So I think, you know, like I had, you know, Jory, I had Randall, I had Devontae in front of me, and everybody said, "Why isn't Jared playing? Why isn't Jared playing?" And so I just remember getting all those questions and whatnot. And the coaches, I felt bad for them because they had to answer all these questions. And I was always talking to my family, I'm like, "You got to understand how it works." Like, I was 100 times better than these guys, I'd be playing, but at the end of the day, everybody's pretty much the same, it's just who can take advantage of their opportunities. Um, but yeah, so I never really got to play a whole lot. Got in, you know, every once in a while as, you know, third guy or fourth guy. Um, had to play special teams, which I hated. Um, <laughs> that was the worst. Um, I was a receiver. I'm not trying to block some 6'8", 280 pound guy on kickoff returns, so. Um, but, but yeah, that was, um, it was fun. It was a really good experience. I think the difference between NFL and college was, you know, in college you knew you'd be there for, you know, basically five years or four years. Where NFL you could be there for a day, or you could be there for, you know, 20 years, um, and that was really tough. I think, you know, just mentally to be, you know, in the bottom half of the roster where it's like, well, shoot, you see guys getting cut, um, you know, left and right, and you just don't know what your day is going to be. So it puts a lot of stress on, you know, you as a player when you're competing in practice in the field. And and so that was always something I struggled with um, to try to, to really put my faith and trust in God that, you know, like I said, he's got a plan. Um, and it's, but it's easier said than done to, to do that when you got, you know, a family to provide for and, and you kind of want things. So, um, but I had a really great experience with the Packers. I ended up playing one year with the Lions. Um, and then after that, for me, it was time to put the cleats away. Um, at that time, I already had my two daughters. And so I wanted to be back home back in Wisconsin where I grew up and, and give them, you know, their life and let them live their life um, at that point and get some roots down. So um, that's kind of what we decided. I'm just going to you know, call it. And um, yeah, it's been really great being home since. Um, I think that one year away for me was really good because I got to experience, you know, a different, I mean, yeah, different state. I was never out of the state of Wisconsin. And so that's where I really realized that I loved Wisconsin and where I grew up and the people and, and how friendly everybody is. Um, and that's things that I already knew, um, but it just kind of reaffirmed that. And so, um, you know, it's been, it, it was really cool to do that. But then I also was able to, through that, um, start a foundation. Um, so we support um, human services of six different counties, um, you know, really helping people that come upon tough times um, and really children trying to get them to camps and give them other opportunities. So through that experience, I was able to, um, you know, see the importance of Wisconsin and how much I love this, I wanted to give back. And so started that. Um, and then I think, you know, kind of tying back into goal setting, obviously I wouldn't be where I was without goal setting. Um, it's huge, it's important. Um, you know, really I think you can use it in anything that you do. Um, I always say you want to have like a, you know, the top 
goal that maybe seems unachievable, um, but then you need to make other goals that can achieve that goal, that you can have success and, and have you know, those joys of accomplishing those smaller goals as you reach them. And I kind of want to talk to like, you know, kids or whatever that are trying to be you know, the best athlete that they can be to reach that goal. I say, well, as a six-year-old, you can't play in the NFL, so it's, it's try to be the best you can be on your local team. And then through the high school, it's try to be the best maybe guy in the state. And once you do that, okay, let's try to earn a scholarship or do this or that. So you, know, you can't just be that guy, you know, that top goal right away, but you need to have those goals and you need to set more achievable ones. So in business now, you know, I'm a financial advisor at Thrive. I've been there for this is my fifth year now, which is crazy. Um, but you know, I run my own business, um, and so it's really goal setting is huge. Um, it's trying to have different goals that I want to achieve, and so I've been able to use a lot of you know the things that I've learned in my life from sports um, and kind of implement that into my life, um, you know, with business too. So um, yeah, I think. So we're back in Wisconsin, um, back in Montoma, Wisconsin. Um, I grew up in Montoma, just you know, 20 minutes south of um, Montoma is where Montoma is. That's where we moved to. Um, I'm a big hunter, so I got a couple hunting properties over there. I figured I want to be close to that, um, and that's where we built our office. So it's been kind of fun to be home. Um, yeah, love Wisconsin, um, but I think everything that you guys are doing is, is is super important. Like I said, it's it's really about the community. It's really about building up, um, you know, young leaders. Um, if you're you know, a little bit older is building up, you know, your children that maybe have children as well, um, because that's really where it starts. It's about the community and building that so that people can be successful. Um, you guys build them a good place that they feel comforted, and I, really, I think Wisconsin, especially the small towns, do that really well. So, um, but yeah, I think that's you know really ties everything together. I think I could go a million different directions with my story, but I want to keep it somewhat shorter and kind of tie it in with the business as well. So, does anybody have any questions? I don't even know what time we got, so you can tell me if the questions go too long or people want to get out of here to say no questions. Or doesn't matter to me. If we have questions, I can bring in a microphone real quick. People could probably just talk and I hear them. Okay. Anybody? Yeah. So where in your life did you meet your wife, Rachel? So where in my life did I meet my wife, Rachel? Um, tongue twister. Um, I met her down <laughs> at Madison, um, and so we met through our church. Um, we had like a small group. The night I met her, I was with Ethan Armstrong. He was a linebacker for us um, on the team, and we were both in his Bible study together. And on the way home, I told him I was going to marry her. And so I did. <laughs> worked out. Any other questions? Yep. Right there. Yeah, um, so for those that didn't hear, what advice would I give a young man that had the same injury with a femur and ruined their aspirations um, for football or sports? And I think I think about this with, um, through even through COVID, I mean, you know, individuals that lost their senior year or, or different things like that, um, I, I definitely, I, I don't think it was an easy way. Um, I mean, it, it's tough, but I think at the end of the day, if, you know, everything does happen for a reason and you're not gonna know that you know, today you're not going to know it tomorrow. It might take you 20, 30 years. Um, but I think, you know, we go through things in life for a reason. And as long as we're trying to better ourselves and, and maybe that spare, you know, that individual from another injury or something more serious or maybe just pointed them to a different direction in life where, you know, hey, now I have to focus my efforts on something else. And that's kind of what, you know, I think with football, um, for me, like when I was done playing, you know, it was, I really felt – a void in my life because not that I was identified, I didn't, I never identified, you know, as a football player. That wasn't my identity. You know, really, my identity is in Christ, and that's what's most important to me. But you know, it's a big part of my life. I mean, I woke up every day, you know, eight, six, seven meals a day to try to you know, gain weight, keep my weight. You know, worked out, ran, you know, watched film, studied film, and so when that was done, that was a huge void that I had to replace. Um, and so even if I didn't have to work. You still want to find the next that next passion, the next thing in your life that you can pursue and better yourself, and and so that's kind of what I had to find for myself is what is that next thing that I want to do and be be great at. Um, and so, you know, maybe that's just earlier in his life, um, or you know, other individuals' lives, where it's just trying to point to that next thing that you know 
things and what, what he's meant to do. So never easy going through those moments though. And obviously, you know, there's there's tough things that you gotta deal with. Um, but I think just knowing that he, at the end of the day that there's some there's some reason and there's gonna be a better thing out there for him. Story about a coach. I mean, any coach. Any coach. That's a good one. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, so realistically, like coaches, you get really, you get really close with like your position coaches, but the head coaches you never really dealt with. Um, OCs you never really dealt with as much. Um, yeah. I mean, I got good stories of players and stuff, but coaches, I never really had too much. I mean, obviously, I, I mean, you know, in, in college, I don't know, they got position coaches. I've been, even in the NFL, like, I had Edgar Bennett, um, so he was a running back for the Packers. Um, and I actually had, like, a card of Edgar Bennett. For some reason, I, I never really collected cards, but for some reason, somehow I got a card when I was a kid and I still had it. But then he ended up being my position coach. Um, and Edgar Bennett was awesome, um, one of the best guys I've ever met. But yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any like crazy stories because they never could do any crazy things. It's <laughs> uh, always another question over here somewhere. Maybe not. What type of business are you in? Um, so I work for Thriving. Um, so we do financial advising, so retirement planning and whatnot. So myself and another individual, um, we own our business, I guess. Obviously Thriving is huge, but we have our own office. Any other questions? It could be about anything. Maybe I'm over going my time, I'm not sure. So, but if there's any other questions on anything, feel free. Question for you. Yep. So you said you like to hunt and you have some hunting land. So what's the biggest buck you've ever shot? Oh, he's putting me on the spot. <laughs> he said, I like, I like to hunt, so what's the biggest buck I've shot? So my biggest score is 160 inch. Um, so it was a 12 pointer. But I, I haven't really had much time to hunt until the last like three or four years. So. I, to be fair, I, you know, that's why I was kind of like ready to be done with football too, because every football season I can never hunt. <laughs> it's about time to give that up. Life's only so short. I gotta get some years in the woods. So. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, good evening everyone, and welcome. So tonight we're gonna to kick off our first um, Heart of the Wisconsin Community Awards. And these are new to us, so we are excited to kick them off. We have two award winners tonight. The first one's gonna be sponsored by West Rock. We appreciate their support. And the first winner is One Rose Floral and Green House. Well, we want to <laughs> the Greenhouse was established in 1961 by Carol and Delbert Wunrow. They began selling per perennials outside of their yard in 1978. They added a greenhouse and their garage served as a showroom. The business has expanded to the area across the street where they have landscaping items. Look for additions coming soon to this area. After Dell passed away, Carol married Chuck Brody, and they have presently full fledged floral operation. Award winning designers are available for making arrangements for you custom designing, funeral flowers, weddings, special occasions, perennials, annuals, and so much more. They participate in many fundraisers for groups and organizations. They have been in the business for 61 years. 
in Coney, and have been chamber members for 25 years this year. They are available most of the time. You can give them a call. If you have an emergency, they are always happy to work with you. We are blessed to have such a blooming business in the heart of Wisconsin area. Please welcome up Carol and Chuck to accept their award. Congratulations, you guys. We appreciate everything you do for us and the community. All right, congratulations again. Our second Heart of the Community Award is sponsored by Metallico. This award goes to Current Technologies, Inc. Has was started in January 2011 by Mark Hamas and Rick Rustin, who made the decision to separate from an existing company to concentrate on electrical contracting. Thirteen other employees' decision to separate or to join Mark and Rick, as well as Mark's wife Terry, as office manager, to make up the new Current Technologies Inc. Electrical contractors located at 2220 Market Avenue in Port Edwards. They currently employ 30 people on the payroll, making Current Technologies Inc. the largest private employer in Port Edwards. They feel it is important to support the communities that, they, that support you. They have been a chamber investor for over 11 years, making many donations and volunteering for many part of Wisconsin efforts in Wisconsin Rapids, Nacusa, Port Edwards, and Rome. They have teamed up with the Wisconsin Rapids Raptors for different community nights, including the Salford County Humane Society Bark in the Park night. Rick, his wife, Charmaine, who lives in Wisconsin Rapids, and their two daughters have been involved in many community endeavors, including Assumption School fundraising projects and the Aqua Skiers. Rick is also on the YMCA and Solaris boards. Mark and Terry, who live in Elmerdale, and their two sons, have also been involved in many community events as well. Albendale. At the Albendale Music Fest or school projects, Stevens Point happenings, and Central Wisconsin Gift of Life events held in Wisconsin Rapids. Current Technologies is proud to be selected to provide the electrical on past projects, including YMCA Boys and Girls Club, Wisconsin Rapids Recreation Complex, Century World and Century Hotel. Aspires Riverview Projects, Misty Culinary and other Misty Projects, numerous school projects including Nakusa, Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools, Assumption Schools, Stevens Point Area Schools, Pittsville and Elmerdale, along with many area splash pads and pools, just to name a few projects. In 2019, Current Technologies had received an award from Polar Company for its outstanding sales and service. 
They have been a platinum dealer with Kohler Residential Generators for the past three years. for its increased sales over the past three years. Current Technologies is looking forward to the busy summer and busy year ahead with some larger projects that are already underway. Please welcome up the owners of Current Technologies. Congratulations again. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have our Heart of Wisconsin Community of Legacy Award. This is a new award, and it recognizes a long-standing Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce investor and their long-term commitment to economic growth and community investment in the Heart of Wisconsin and community. Proven record of providing quality products and or services in the Heart of Wisconsin area, and actively participate in community programs and organizations. We are excited to um, have Ocean's Ray sponsoring this, and our next winner this year for this one will be our first one ever, is Whittlesey Cranberry. As one of the oldest marshes in Wisconsin, Whittlesey Cranberry mirrors the story of cranberry growing throughout the state. Generation of the Whittlesey ancestors have observed, adopted, and contributed to technical innovation that have brought the cranberry industry from gathering wild berries in untamed swamps by hand by the efficiently driven techniques for growing and harvesting that are used today. On July 28, 1871, Sher Sher Sherman Whittlesey secured the title to 640s of state swamp land at the present site of Whittlesey Cranberry Company. Sherman passed away in 1935 at the age of 86, leaving a legacy as one of the original Cranberry pioneers, an entrepreneur, and a community leader. During his tenure, Whittlesey Cranberry grew from 240 acres to 1,200 acres, with 1,200 with 55 acres of producing vines. Following Sherman's death, his daughter Harriet and her husband Clarence Jasperson owned and operated the marsh. In 1937, they constructed state-of-the-art housing for the harvest workers. In addition, Harriet ran a kitchen, eating eating hall and stores in his bunkhouse for the harvest workers. Harriet and Clarence's son, Newell Jasperson, graduated from University of Wisconsin-Madison in 1939 and returned to the family farm. He met Helen Y. at the university. They married in 1940 and raised three children on the marsh, Steve, Bill, and Joanne. Throughout his tenure, Whittlesey Cranberry continued to innovate and adopt new practices. Handraking was the harvest method, method when Newell came back to the marsh. So the dry raking of those years turned to wet handraking in the early 1940s. After years of experimenting, the entire marsh was covered by an overhead sprinkler system by 1967. 
allowing the company to move away from raising water to irrigate and frost protect. Whittlesey introduced the feeder system of harvesting cranberries to central Wisconsin in 1968. Among other community and industry leadership roles, Newell was active in the Wisconsin State Cranberry Growers Association and served on the Ocean Survey Board of Directors from 1971 to 1985. Newell's grandson, Robert Dettelson, returned to the marsh after graduating from UW-Madison in 2000. Always looking to improve efficiencies, Newell and Robert pushed an innovative innovation at Whittlesey together. In the 2000s, they adapted from the long-used feeder system of harvesting families to the use of the ruby slipper and later the harrow. In 2006, Newell conceived of and developed a new way to move berries during harvest with a cranberry carousel fairy pump. In 2011, the original warehouse building was renovated, re -renov renovated and converted into offices and gathering spaces in the break room for workers. Newell was a lifelong cranberry grower living on a marsh until his passing in 2016 at the age of 98, marking the end of an era. But the fourth, fifth, and sixth generation are greatly honored and privileged to be carrying on. Having celebrated Whittlesey's Whittle Whittle cranberry 150th anniversary last year, Newell and Helen's daughter, Joanne Detlison, is the family historian and has been the Marsh bookkeeper for many years. Joanne's husband, Guy, happily moved back to Joanne's hometown to practice law and raise their children. Robert and his wife, Liesl, live in the recently renovated original farm homestead where the, she writes books for children, including some about cranberries and agriculture. Joanne and Guy's daughter, Kristen, does the office work with her mom and drives the dump trucks full of cranberries to the receiving station during harvest. And her husband, Paul, brought new talents and skills to the business when he joined them full time in 2014. The next generation, Jasper and Wesley Detlison and Natalie and Grayson Henson greatly enjoy spending time together on the marsh and if any luck they'll carry on their family tradition. Please welcome up the Whittlesey Cranberry to bring this year, which was exciting for me. Um, I know a lot of the area chambers have been doing these for many years, and we've been asked about them, and so this year, with everything going on in the, the world and the communities, we thought it was a perfect time to bring them on board. So this year, with it being new, we have the extra work the educators and staff have put into things going on in the world. We have a great time to recognize a few of them. Our first one was nominated by Michelle Linsmeyer, and she actually made it. I see her. <laughs> Sweet. Heidi Hartman, a fourth grade teacher. This one is sponsored by ERCO Worldwide. From Alexander Middle School in Nakusa, has been teaching for 22 years. Heidi is from Green Bay area. Little, um, thank you, in Pulaski, <laughs> where her husband found a job that worked out at Central Wisconsin. She decided to transfer to UWSP. She graduated from the UW University of Wisconsin Student Point in 1997 and soon went back to get her master's degree in education in 2001. She subbed for three years before getting her position in Nakusa. After doing some long-term subbing in the district, she discovered that it was a great district and wouldn't want to be anywhere else. <laughs> she became a teacher because she originally wanted to be a meteorologist, and her mom said she couldn't be hiding under tables like she did when, she, when storms came. But it really was... <laughs> But really it was that she had the opportunity to do work, study in high school in the grade school that was close. From eighth grade on, she was always looking for opportunities to be a teacher. She once played teacher with her little cousin and discovered she, was, she knew how to read at the age of three. No one knew she could. She always enjoyed the upper elementary age. The most rewarding thing of being a teacher is the kids that seek me out in the hallways when they are older and continue 
you want to see me. It is some of the most challenging kids that I've worked with to do, that do this. I think it was because they loved, believed in them and knew that they could make gain in their learning. My daughter was one that had high needs, so she was a great learner. So Michelle wrote, in what way does the educator teacher use innovation and creativity in their classroom for teaching strategies? She goes, Heidi's energy is only matched by her fourth grade students. She strives for her students to have fun while learning, listening to their strategy, suggestions. Recently, her fourth grade held their annual Lumberjack Day. One of the many activities was the log relay. Heidi created a forest of trees in our small gym. Her students were so interested in learning how canoes were made and asked if they could build their own. She magically came up with enough cardboard to build one. How does this educator teacher inspire students to learn and achieve? She, she listens to their ideas and encourages them to think outside the box. She is vested in knowing each one personally and they know she is someone who truly cares about them and who wants them to succeed and be successful. She holds them to a higher standard and they strive to achieve because of her expectations. What does does this educator teacher do to go above and beyond outside the classroom and the school and then the community? Heidi shows her shares her personal style with her students, parents, and develops many close relationships with families she works with. She is very involved with the youth in her church and hands heads up fourth grade teams planning for field trips and musical elements such as decorating costumes and is one of the first ones to volunteer to help out other staff members for their projects. So if we can bring up Heidi, we want to congratulate you. And unfortunately, last Friday when we were doing surprises and um, surprising the teachers, this was fun for me. Um, Heidi was on her way to Madison at 6 a.m. I got to surprise her. That was lots of fun. <laughs> I'm not a morning person if everybody knows me. So we got to surprise her and Channel 9 didn't get to be there. So they are putting on something tonight for you. So you'll have to tune in or check on their website. Um, she had emailed me that. So she felt bad that she hadn't got it out there yet. So we want to give you, um, you the next one I get our little golden leaf apple. something written down but it's sitting at my table but I, I, there's many I'd like to thank because there's no way I could do this alone I have a husband who supports me with all the extra hours I put in parents who have encouraged me all along the way administration who is sitting here tonight and a fourth grade team that goes with my crazy ideas all the time I have an idea <laughs> But this is Heidi. Here comes all the kids with the cranes, the big cranes that they built in the snow. And they're traveling. They're coming along. They mostly made it there. So, you know, they're great. And her husband surprised her on the day of the award, too. So her face was priceless. So that was nice. <laughs> He is a Wisconsin Rapids Public Schools Career and Technical Educated Education Coordinator from Lincoln High School. Jeremy has been teaching for nine years, and this one is sponsored by Renaissance, and I'd like to have our two Renaissance representatives come up if they'd like, or they can stand and wave, I'm not sure. Yeah. Thank you for sponsoring it. <laughs> and Jeremy, I would like to get a picture with you with them. Yes, I could. So, he became a teacher as he always thought of this as a high school teacher or ag teacher, Mr. Galinsky. How many here in the room know Ms. who Mr. Galinsky was? Only a few. I met Mr. Galinsky when I first started at the chamber. Angel would know him too, from doing our dairy berry breakfast. He was amazing to work with. Mr. Galinsky had an, has an amazing job in managing the school forests, raising plants in the greenhouse, caring for animals on campus, and working with students to re reveal their possible career someday. 
Mr. Kalinske was someone Jeremy looked up to and still does to this day. Additionally, Jeremy, college advisor, encouraged him and thought that he had many good attributes of a teacher. Why egg ed? Much of what he he had always been interested in is revolves around agriculture. From fish to forests, plants to animals, and deeply rooted appreciation for life's simple necess necessities such as food and clean water. With a set of diverse topics in agriculture, there was no room for a boring day at work. Most rewarding feeling. Past students reporting how useful the classes were in the real world, and when past students report what Mr. Radke meant to them as a teacher during their high school years. College, UW-Platteville, he went to, and he then got his master's. He chose to come back to his hometown because of family, friends, and connection to the community. This was Eric Seiler's nomination. And what does this educator teacher use innovation and creativity in the classroom or work? As Jeremy was the coordinator, it is my pleasure to nominate him. He is deserving of this award because his actions speak for themselves. Jeremy is never satisfied with, with the status quo. He is always looking for other ways to improve and innovate. The LHS Ag program and engage students, staff, and community members in the process. In the past five years, Jeremy has updated the Ag Department course scope and sequence to include three dual credit courses with the State Technical College and two science equivalency courses. These opportunities foster student growth and achievement students earn college credits while in high school. In addition to Jeremy adding this college rigor to his course, his students are always practicing relevance in their day to day on hands-on, minds-on learning activities. Whether his students are in the, the greenhouse, the forest, local pond, or taking care of the LHS course or goat, they always have a smile on their face, understanding why they be behind their learning tasks. How does this educator teacher inspire their students to learn and achieve? One example of Jeremy in inspiring his students to learn and achieve is with additions he has made to the LHS greenhouse. He added aquaponics system in which fish and plants are raised in a closed loop configuration where nothing goes to waste. In 2019, he added a second system called the tube system. Students prepare the fish tank, filtration system, water pump, grow beds, and lighting beds to complete the system. Recently, he wrote a grant for $5,000 to fund a new third aquaponic growth method called deep water culture, also known as floating rack system. This grant was directly related to student growth and development as the students created the blueprints, helped purchase and supplies, and constructed the final project. Now, one year later, those graduated students are volunteering in the LHS Ag and FFA program as alumni showing their dedication to the Ag Ed, LHS Community and Mr. Radke program. Jeremy's willingness to always go the extra mile and all students is a very aspect of his program, and his positive attitudes has, has resulted in increased and students FFA participation in egg enrollment nearly doubled since he started. <laughs> what does this educator teacher do to go above and beyond outside their classroom, in their school, or in their community? Jeremy is truly an example of a lifelong learner. He is always striving to find opportunities to learn for himself and his students. Below are some examples of him going above and beyond. So we have a list of them. Solar panel installation. Mid-state urban forestry advisory committee member. Wood County forestry volunteer. Farm to school member. Wood County soil comp competition. Pumpkin fest. Wisconsin DNR wildlife snapshot volunteer. Wisconsin Envirothon. Spade and neuter clinics. Community and, high sc and school gardens. DNR hunter edu edu education instructor. And Jeremy, can you come on up and accept your award, please?
Ooh, participation. I got a lot of participation. Here. Kelly, maybe ignore that educator effectiveness. I did. <laughs> uh, so I got one for tonight. Um, in order to keep a teacher sane and level headed, it takes a village. Yes, it takes a village to raise a kid, but also a teacher um, on his feet and operate. And so there is many um, forms of support that come with that, and that's really why I want to stand here tonight and say thank you for, is the people that uh, support me, whether it be um, my people at work, uh, my family and my friends, uh, and my wife, who I often come home to whining like a little baby about my hard day. <laughs> so, um, and, and also uh, the good Lord for uh, keeping me on the straight and narrow and uh, eyes on what's important. So. With that, I just want to say thank you and also congratulate all the other people um, that are accepting awards tonight and also the people that are here with them that supported them through all the whining and crying and complaining <laughs> to get through and, and understand that uh, you take all the, the good with the bad and the bad with the good. So, thank you. I forgot to ask Carol if she wanted to say something earlier, so we're going to let her talk. I'm never usually at loss for words. I know that. <laughs> um, I just want to thank you and thank everybody else for the years that they've been coming to the greenhouse. And uh, just so Jared knows, God works different ways because in October I broke my left foot and then I had four surgeries and now. I have broken three bones in the right foot, and that's why I'm in this chair tonight. But I only got two weeks to go, and I'll be back at work. In Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a very nice full of flowers right now, so <laughs> I got to get up there and meet everybody only in my chair. And I want to thank the chamber, and we, we've been happy to be members of them for many, many years. And I'm sorry I didn't say thank you when we were up there before, but being the first one, I didn't know if I could talk or not. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody, and thank you. And the last couple of years, we've had MC, so I'm still getting used to this one thing. So we want to start with our community leadership program now. And how many here have been through our community leadership program? This is our 34th year. So raise your hands. If you haven't, you're missing out. So as I'm going through now, <laughs> so our community leadership program is a dynamic, interactive leadership development program designed to provide a deeper understanding of our community, share practical tools for effective community leadership, and empower participants to be catalysts for positive change. So last year we really didn't get to do a graduation because of COVID, and we have a few of our participants that came tonight, so I just want to have them stand up. If they are in the room, uh, I know some of them just popped in and did the networking part. But we really wanted to thank them for uh, participating and being here tonight. If there is anyone left, I don't know if there's anybody or not. And then we are going to kick off and go to our current year. So we want to thank our community leadership partner, Pochunk Gaming, is always one of our big sponsors for the program. So we appreciate their support. And we also would like to thank Paper City Savings, Mid-State Technical College, Axe Garage, Bullseye Golf Club, and Will County Sheriff's Department for their participation in sponsoring and um, partnering with us this year. Our co-chairs this year for our leadership retreat were Paul Liebherr, and our community services was Terry Johns and Kurt Hoyer. Diversity is Jackie Carati, Car Caratini. Economic Development, Angel Whitehead and Kyle Kearns. Government Services, Jason Grunenberg. Education and Workforce Development, Bobby Damro and Mid-State Staff. We went to Baraboo this year. If you talk to any of the students this year, this is the best year ever. They had lots of fun in Baraboo. You'll have to ask them. <laughs> and then tying it all together um, was Paul. So we just finished off our last session this last week, and they went axe um, throwing, so that was fun for them. And a lot of bonding has happened. So we are going to go back here. There we go. All right, we are going to start with our first person I see I pulled out. I think he's going to be not He's out sick. So Scott Killian, he was from Wisconsin Rapids Police Department. He sent his apologies. <laughs> Hermione, you want to take it to him? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him.
Taylor Miller from United Way. Rhonda Bilbaum, Andy Papers. Bobby Jo Rosenthal couldn't make it. She's with Next Home Partners. Tori Manson and Nash Law Group. That's perfect. You can come up. And Hannah Quick. So Hannah became a quick halfway through the year. It's Hannah Ashbeck. That's you and me. So thank you, Hannah. She's well. Hannah's actually a Harvard Wisconsin employee, so she's a former. And then she did great speaking for her. Jaden Palman from Urkel Worldwide. Thank you. Trisha Perky, Champion of Carmel. Thank you. Candy Schmidt, I don't know if she made it. She had a little babysitter issue. Candy is from Badger State Group. Abigail, Abigail D. Wild, she didn't make it either, and she's from Badger State Group. Adam Mansell from Aspirus. Yeah, get out there, Adam. Woo! Thank you, Adam. Jamie Gieber from Town of Rome. Brittany. from the county sheriff's department. His daughter is ranked number one for Lincoln, and tonight was their um, awards night in honor tonight. Charlie Hugesteiger, Woo! The county sheriff's well, department. Captain. <laughs> Tina Waller. There you go. Thank you. She's from Wisconsin Rapids Public School, and she is a principal. Benjamin Rhinewand, and Benjamin is in Hawaii for his sister's wedding. He works at Prevail Bank. Andrea Estago Pepper from Ho Chunk Nation. Ho Chunk Gaming News. And Stephanie Hartman from OBC. Congratulations to our leadership class here. If our teens want to make their way to the hallway, that would be great. So team leadership this year was new to the heart of Wisconsin. Encourage ran it for many years. My daughter, four years ago, was the last year. And then the high schools ran it for the last few years. And last year with COVID, it wasn't ran. So I had partnered with them to bring it back. And we are excited to do it. We had 25 students. Um, they are taking applications right now. I believe some of the schools probably have close to their quota, um, but we are excited. And if you have a sophomore, a freshman going into a sophomore and that would be interested in doing the program, let us know. It's an amazing program. They've had a lot of fun. And we are also excited to have our sponsors for this. We had a lot of great program sponsors. Coach on Gaming Nakusa, Paper City Savings, Mystic Technical College, um, UWSP, and we will get the rest of them in just a second. Let's get these girls rolling. I think we have Emma Waltenberg going first. Emma? And Emma did a PowerPoint presentation tonight for us. Nope, we did it all myself. We didn't do it all but <laughs> They thought they were going to line up in alphabet order, I think, but I did not. We just put them in any order, so 
but they all don't get called at the same time. Aubrey Schroeder. I remember when I was younger, I didn't like having a later last letter, so that's why we made it so everybody can have it. Nathan Gibb. Nathan's from Port Edwards, Aubrey was from Port Edwards, and Emma was from Nakusa. We have Dakota Barr, I always want to say it wrong, from Port Edwards. Austin Martinson from Port Edwards. Emma Anderson from Nakusa. Samuel Ward from Nakusa. Kiara Campbell from Nakusa. is going to talk about their project and how their sessions went. So we have Maddie Hensel. Good evening. I'm really excited to be representing the Heart of Wisconsin Wood County Team Leadership Group tonight. As Krista said, my name is Maddie Hensel. I'm a junior at Pittsville High School. In school, I'm active as the president of both National Honor Society in my class, as well as playing football, soccer, and track. I work for Memory Lane Farm, a faith-based nonprofit focusing on youth education and mentoring. I work in program development, marketing, and assist the executive director with event planning. When I'm not at work, you may see me making public appearances as the Wisconsin hosting princess or exhibiting my family's dairy cattle internationally. Due to the pandemic, I almost missed my chance at being a part of this program. Thankfully, I was able to join this group a year late. The Wood County Team Leadership Group is comprised of sophomores and juniors from Assumption, Nakusa, Lincoln, Pittsville, and Port Edwards High Schools. This organization seeks to build leadership skills in area youth by having us meet other teens, take part in exciting activities, have a voice in our community, and learn about issues affecting our future. Throughout the year, we travel to businesses and organizations in Wood County to learn and help develop our leadership potential. We were introduced to a community mentor that we've talked to and learned from throughout the year. Paul Leepar guided us through a habit workshop to aid in our training. Now, a few of my fellow group members will reflect on our activities and our final projects. My name is Delaney Konarowski. 
I'm a junior at Pittsville High School. I participate in basketball, volleyball, and track and field. I am also part of NHS, student council, forensic, band, choir, drama, and FCCLA. For our first session, we went to the South Wood County Y Camp. During this meeting, we played icebreaker game to better get to know each other. Then we discussed the results of our strength finder test. It was interesting to see how not one person had the same five strengths. From there, we brainstormed ideas for a project. These ideas range from helping the elderly, to donating to charity organizations, and to helping other students. We ended our session by meeting with important members of the community. It was nice to see what Rapids has to offer. Our second session was at Wood County Rapids Elk Lodge. During the session, we focused on public services. We heard from Wood County Human Services and Health Department, Edgewater Haven Administration, the Noon Rotary Club, United Way, and Aspire. This session really taught us how much goes into keeping Wood County a safe and clean place. Our third session focused on emergency services. Throughout the day, we toured Wisconsin Rapids EMS and Fire, Wood County Sheriff's Rescue, Wisconsin Rapids Police Department, Wood County Sheriff's Department Jail and Dispatch, the Wood County Courthouse. This was by far my favorite session as it was the most interactive. I really enjoyed my experience with team leadership and would encourage youth in the future to join the program. Hello everyone, my name is Abby Gellman and I'm a current senior at Lincoln High School. I am currently involved in band, National Honor Society, and the current vice president of Rapids. I also work at Farmers Insurance Company. For our January session, we learned about different businesses and entrepreneurship in our community. We spent time visiting Royal Front, Quality Cup Cookery, Jacoby Cup and Cheese. We also got time to talk to Champion Car Wash and a few other local businesses. It was interesting learning about how so many businesses got their start in our area and the great amount of work that they put into running successful and thriving businesses. January, no, February was one of my favorite meetings. We toured the New Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA in Wisconsin Rapids. Then we talked with local health professionals about services they offer. Um, a few of the things we heard about were very new to a lot of us in acupuncture, uh, but um, some of us had heard of it, and then it was really cool to see them and learn about more about our health. This was the first meeting where we started to really talk in about our project and plan for it. We listened to many veterans from lo our local areas about what they needed or wanted from us, and it was to hear great their input for our project. Then in March, we met at the Rapids DFW. Most of the time we spent finalizing plans for our project and creating a plan of how we would be able to successfully execute it. This was also the meeting when we started to realize that our project was going to be a lot more work than we thought it originally would be. <laughs> Club, forensics, <laughs> and I am class president. In the month of April, we toured Point Bass in the morning, and we learned a lot about the history of Nakusa and how big of an impact the river had on this area. The next place we went was the community theater. We learned a lot about how a performance works and what the theater has to offer. This one was actually my personal favorite because I adore theater. Um, we learned about how um, the last place we went to was the Central Wisconsin Cultural Center. This is where we learned a lot about all the different events and programs Wisconsin Rapids has to offer. Then we had project work time. <laughs> our goal for our service project was to help our veterans in some way. Even though it took a couple weeks to figure out uh, what we wanted to do, um, we did come together to figure out how we could help. This is going to be done by donating cookies to veterans in senior citizen homes. And this Sunday, we will be going to cemeteries and cleaning fallen soldiers' gravestones. With that being said, we are looking for volunteers. Um, if you are interested or willing to volunteer, um, you can talk to Krista or I um, at the end of the program. Hello everybody, my name is Emma Anderson and I'm a junior at Nakusa High School. I am involved in student council, prom committee, and school
School Musical. I'm captain of the NHS dance team, and I was part of the 2021-2022 Team Leadership Program. The Team Leadership opportunity was brought to me when my principal, Mr. Johnson, came up to me and said, Hey, Emma, will you be interested in doing the Team Leadership Program? They are looking for a few exceptional students from each of the schools in the area. I told him I would think about it, but to be honest, I had no idea what the Team Leadership Program was or what it entailed. When asking other teachers about the program, I got common responses like, I don't know exactly what it is, but you should do it because it looks good on college applications. <laughs> or a bunch of students get together and learn how to be leaders in their community. Eventually, I decided that I would try it, and I soon discovered that team leadership and its experience is different. It's so much more than I thought it would be. I personally think that team leadership and its experience is different for each person, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience. The team leadership program has taught me how to not only be a leader, but it has shown me how to be successful and step out of my comfort zone. When I went to the first meeting, I was so nervous that I didn't even try to talk to other people in the program. Over time, I realized that in order for the program to make an impact on my life or any lives around me, I would have to push my nerves aside and get to work. The program made it possible for me to learn an immense amount of information about our community, and I was able to bring the information back to my school. The program helped me greatly when it came to be more of a social and outspoken person. It has helped me realize how important it truly is to give back to the community that we all gain so much from. I would like to take a moment to thank a few people that I had the pr privilege of working with during this program. I would like to thank Krista Kuhn, who ran the entirety of the team leadership program. She made it possible for the program to not only exist this year, but to flourish in such amazing ways. I would also like to thank Paul Lieber, who gave us students numerous important messages and lessons that we will continue to remember. Thank you for showing us how to accept our weaknesses and instead focus on our strengths. Lastly, I would like to thank Eric Dobbin, who I was honored to have as my mentor. Thank you for giving me guidance and advice on numerous things in my future. Thank you, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. truly incredible opportunity that has allowed me to learn so much about my community and the surrounding ones that I never knew before. I always looked forward to our monthly meetings because they were sure to be jam-packed with fun, excitement, information, and the inevitable opportunity to further develop myself as a leader. It was fantastic to be able to meet other students my age that share a common interest in becoming influential co contributors to our community and, the de and developing into the leaders of tomorrow. The Team Leadership Program has allowed me to see so much of the value in our community that is often taken for granted. For example, I have found that the true heart and soul of Central Wisconsin is not as superficial as not, <laughs> so I apologize, but the true heart and soul of Central Wisconsin is not as superficial as one may think. It consists of a, it consists of a significant network of hardworking, driven individuals who care deeply about maintaining our beautiful community often go without recognition. I learned that this town has so much more to offer than what may meet the eye at a provincial glance. Throughout this program, not only did we spend each day visiting and learning about various noteworthy sites throughout our community, but we also spent valuable time listening to our local leaders and how they give back to our society. Between observing these influential mentors and obtaining information from Paul each month on how to become a more effective team leader, I can say with confidence that my experience in the heart of Wisconsin team
from Sand Valley for her guidance, motivation, and support as a role model for me. Chelsea was a great professional confidant this last year at our mentor luncheon. I thoroughly enjoyed being able to meet with her at Sand Valley. Thank you, Chelsea. We'd also like to thank Krista Kuhn for coordinating this program and Paul Lee Bear for teaching us valuable qualities of leaders. To conclude, I'd like to recognize our program sponsors. Mid-State Technical College, Marshfield Clinic, Herco Worldwide, UW-Stevens Point, Paper City Savings, Lakeland University, and the City of Wisconsin Rapids. If a representative from these organizations is here, please see me after this program for a note from the group. Thank you for your support towards the youth of Wood County. If you have any questions about team leadership, please ask one of our group members. We hope you all enjoy your evening. So it was amazing to have these um, young ladies stand up here and talk. Um, when I asked who wanted to volunteer to speak in front of everybody, they all looked at me like I was crazy, but they all did wonderful, so I appreciate all your hard work. So um, today they all made calls to for um, sponsorships for their project on Sunday. So if you are interested in helping, um, see if one of us out. All right, you guys want to grab your seat? Success is about growing yourself. After you become a leader, success is about growing others. We are going to bring up our next leadership group, and it is the Family Center Fundraiser Drive. So the group that was doing that one, could you please come up here, please? Next up, we have our the City of Wisconsin Rapids project, and who is going to be my speaker on that one? Well, that'd be me. Tina Waller. Charlie needs to come up. Charlie, you're doing the slides, she says. Well, it's pretty hard to follow the team leaders 
very well poised, well prepared, and as a person who is heading into the ending of her career, I'm very excited to see all of the younger leaders that are rising to the challenge of leading our community. It's very exciting to hear, so congratulations to all of you. So our group had, in our mind, ways we could support our downtown community and try to build that up. So we were looking for a way to help beautify and contribute to all the great things that are already happening downtown. So we worked with the city of Wisconsin Rapids in their um, reconstruction project of the West Grand Avenue, Jackson Street um, section of downtown. So this is the Jackson Street Bridge, um, paper mill here, and there's going to be a roundabout here. So this is the police department, just so everybody can get an idea of where this is coming from. This is the expressway here. So with the roundabout going in, we are looking for ways to help build up and beautify that portion of downtown. So um, we put together a call for artists to help create public art in that area. So our, we released our proposal on March 29th, and all proposals are due on Sunday, of this coming Sunday at 5 p.m. So we will look at all the artists that propose projects, and then we will select um, artists to put displays downtown to try to beautify our downtown area. Um, if you've driven in that part of town lately, it's it's well in need of repair. You can see the potholes, and so we're very excited to have a role to play in the beautification of this area. It's going to be fantastic when it's all done. So. Um, our main focus was to try to put some art in the roundabout, but there are other priority areas that artists are welcome to offer their um, ideas for us to choose from. So we're very excited about that. I'd like to um, just want to thank everybody. Again, this whole leadership experience was very fantastic. I met a lot of great, a great group of people, um, made some friends, and hopefully have long-term friendships after this. It's a great experience for everybody and um, it was fun to work on the project and it'll be great to see how it how it comes together. So thanks. Again we want to thank um, community leadership program sponsors and we are going to pull up overall reflections for Jamie Bieber. for the vision for the future. And you're almost done, so I'm sorry we're running a little bit older. Thank you. So when, when it, we were asked to do a reflection, I think at, on our last session, in the middle of lunch, I think most of us looked at our shoes and I looked up. So <laughs> here we go. Um, so good evening. I'm Jamie Gaber. I'm the administrator for the town of Rome. And my reflection from community leadership is the quote, you cannot lead beyond who you are. There's real value in taking time to know your strengths and their shadow sides because being before doing ensures that you end up where you want to be on purpose. And while it can be difficult to break away and spend reflection time, it's important and I really encourage everyone that this leadership experience gave me a moment in time to break away and reflect on my leadership where I was in my life, and uh, I encourage everyone to just, whether you do it through a program like community leadership or on your own, it's just, uh, it gives you a real opportunity because it often allows you to reconnect with core values, which you can add clarity and confidence in your leadership skills. So remembering daily to identify strengths and how they impact your ability to improve your life experience is a valuable lesson and one that I will take from my time in community leadership. Thank you. Hello. I was also a volunteer as tribute. Um, my name is Tori Manstad. I am uh, an attorney with Nash Law Group, um, and obviously a member of the Community Leadership Program this, this past year. Um, it's 
been an honor to have been involved. Um, I have spent the last six years of my life down in Milwaukee, um, and so I, I moved back last May and jumped right into this, and um, I originally grew up in Marshfield, so um, it was a good refresher to get to know what had happened in the last six years while I was away at school, um, and just to see the, the innovation and, and everything that's been happening um, while I was away. So. Um, I think uh, the biggest thing from this program was, um, and this is all Paul, shout out Paul, um, what Jamie said earlier was that you can't lead beyond yourself, um, and so I think taking time to focus and um, building up your strengths and while recognizing your weaknesses is something that um, we need to take more time to do as professionals and um, certainly learn the skills to be able to be able to do that um, as I start out, start out my career right out of school here. So um, thank you to everyone who was in the group. We, uh, we started out strong at the wigwam. Um, and uh, ended up here at Bullseye. So um, it, it was great to meet everyone and, and especially the, the speakers and, and businesses and, that we visited and were volunteers their time to be with us. Um, we're really grateful um, for you to be involved. And um, I hope to be able to convince uh, other people in the community, in the community, to join the program because it was it was a lot of fun and we're paying for it. Shout out, Chops. The retreat is October 13th and 14th, and um, it's at the Rashaw Lions Camp. It's a lot of fun. Paul, if you can make your way up here for a second, please. I'd appreciate it. And our team leadership um, applications are being accepted right now, and they are going to kick off with a parents' um, night, September 7th, and then we'll kick off, I believe, it's September 21st for that. And I'm going to put Paul on the hot spot. You're so good at it, though. So Paul is great. Paul has been with me. I met Paul 17 years ago um, at my leadership session. So we were in the same session 17 years ago. And um, Paul has came on board and has been a great mentor and helper and ran the program with me. And so I'm gonna have ask Paul nicely to close out the session for me tonight. Um, just thinking and telling a little bit about why you're doing what you do. So we appreciate everybody and all they did for us. And we, congratulations to all the winners and make sure you don't leave, come up here so we can get your picture please, okay? Well thanks, I had no idea this was happening. But I came. <laughs> No, um, yeah, I, w I went through the leadership program in 2007. It was going on a long time before I went through it too. So there's been a lot of people. I think of Peter Manley, some of you know him, invested many, many years in the program. And uh, when I graduated in 07, I just talked to Connie Loden, who at that time was the director at, at the chamber and said, now what, right? So what do we do? Because we, we live in a great community and every community, no matter where you live, also faces its challenges. And it takes all of us kind of pulling the, the oar, getting involved, grabbing the rope, and, and working together to make a community something that no one can do individually. And so I've been part of the program just to, honestly, my favorite thing is uh, with the teens and with the adults, I work with both of them, is watching where they go from retreat when you walk in a room with a bunch of strangers. And then you walk out eight months later in session eight and they're friends and they're working together and stuff. It's so cool to see. So it's been a privilege for me to be able to be part of it. Um, I encourage you, if you're in the room and you haven't been through the program, uh, our community needs you. And so I'd encourage you to sign up and go through the program and learn more about our community and who lives here and how we work together. Thanks, and thanks for coming.